See how this works. All right, I think that's might be a little bit better. Hey, everybody, we got a lot of people in here. All right, welcome everybody. Um, I wanted to before we before the thread fills up here, I wanted to um, call out to Jan. Had a question early on, uh, Jan from Minnesota, um, asking about darkening techniques for when you're working with some of the softer graphite pencils. Or, or, 2B or up to you know, it's like an 8B pencil. So if you're looking to try to get darker values out of your graphite, one thing to be aware of is that you can really only get as dark as the pencil can get. So if you compare graphite to charcoal, charcoal is just going to get you a darker mark. So just know that there's a limit there. But if you're trying to push it up to that limit, um, layering can be effective. Oh, we got some issues. What's going on with the audio here? Okay. How's this? Is this a little bit better? Well, that peaked. All right. A little bit louder. All right. It's just, hopefully this is better. Sorry about that. <laughs> Had some audio issues there. Um, getting back to, to Jam's question earlier about um, darkening with uh, a 2B up to 8B pencil. Um, again, what, what I was saying is that... Um, uh, that the, well, I just see a comment about the audio. Is the audio okay now? Sorry, I had some issues there, but if anybody's still struggling with that, let me know. It seems to be coming in now. Um, uh, but if you're looking to try to get dark with graphite pencils, you can layer to get to a darker point. What can sometimes happen though is as you build up those layers, the, the graphite's gonna knock down the tooth of the paper and it's gonna make it more challenging to get subsequent layers on top of that. So if you know you're gonna get, if you know you really want something as dark as you can go with graphite, um, then you might try to hit that value early on if you can, so. All right, better volume, thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that, kind of a rough start today. Hello everybody, we got a lot of comments coming through, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to address anybody, everybody, but hopefully that answers your question, Jim. Um, so we've uh, got people from all over Austria, you know, France, we got Wyoming, this is fantastic close by here. So, um, all right, we can get started today. Sorry about the, the rough intro. Um, as you saw in the title, hats off to you. What we're working on today is this drawing of a hat. If you need the reference uh, photo, it is in the description for the video along with the materials I'm using. So um, as you can kind of guess, I'm gonna be working um, on black paper today. So I'm going to be primarily drawing with white chalk on top of that. Um, so it's, it's forcing me to confront values in a new way and, and forcing me to confront drawing light in a new way. Um, I do have my charcoal pencil available because this is, this is black paper, but the, the charcoal is actually a little bit darker. Um, and I think I'm gonna end up using that towards the end to really get some rich darks there. So similar thinking to what I'm, uh, the way I was approaching the, uh, the previous drawing, uh, working on toned paper, this is just starting from a really dark tone. Um, also thinking about drawing negatively in the fact that a, a, a lot of the negative space around the hat is light and I'm gonna have to be actually have to be building that up rather than adding charcoal to a white page, I'm adding white chalk to the black page in the in kind of a negative drawing process here. So um, this is just black um, drawing kind of mixed media board. It's a little bit heavier. I really like it. It doesn't have a whole lot of tooth. Um, so the chalk is kind of is a bit wispy. You can really kind of wipe this down. So I know throughout the process, I'm going to have to be a bit more sensitive than um, I may in some other drawing, uh, other drawings here. So uh, I, I just need to be careful about with how my hand is kind of building up layers here. Um, I've started to lay out the basic proportions of the hat. So what I'm looking at are these main values here. And again, one of the things that I've talked about a lot in this series is the idea of creating curves as an accumulation of shorter straight segments. And if you can understand the basic direction of a curve and establish that using straight lines, it's easier than to go back into it and add a specific curve. Because um, my instinct is to try to get like the, the rim of the hat, the brim of the hat um, in one go, 
but it's not uh, a perfect oval. Um, it's got some variation to it. Um, if you happen to have a hat that you can work with uh, from life, again, that's always um, my suggestion is to try to work from life. I tried setting up something with um, kind of my baseball caps, and I really wasn't interested in the forms that, that I was looking at. So that's why I chose this kind of fedora styled hat here. Um, this is what I wear when I go out painting a lot. If it's not too hot, it's a wool cap, a wool hat here. Um, so I just want to, again, similar to what I've done in the previous drawings, work out a basic line, but be thinking to myself, this is about establishing the paths of the drawing, not hitting the values right. Once I know where the lines are going to be, I can then evaluate what happens along that path. Is it light? Is it dark? Is it lighter than the, na the neighboring value? Is it darker than the neighboring value? And go from there. Um, I'm also thinking ahead to some of the areas where I want to pay close attention. If I'm looking right in here in the inside of the, the brim, for example, it's, it's a little bit lighter in value here than it is right up here. We get kind of a shadow core right up against the lip and then it rounds into the light uh, ground. So what I'm gonna do is, I know I'm gonna come back into this later with the charcoal and I can let, let some value kind of build up in here but I wanna just be careful with that. Um, so once I'm happy with the overall form um, and kind of working out the basic perspective and the curves here, I'm going to start building up value. And I think what you're, you're going to see me do is building up this background quite a bit. I want to kind of play around with the fact that I'm working on the black paper um, and, and create some atmosphere and maybe not have this go quite as white as I'm seeing in the reference photo uh, and even pull out some of the brighter whites um, and have them be isolated in the hat to help pull that forward. So we'll play around with values. Um, do some kind of interpretation. I'm measuring down now. There's a little bit of light here on the edge of this band here. And I want to place that in the right spot relative to the rest of the hat. This is more about kind of thinking my way through what's going to cause me trouble. And then I can start to build up values from there. All right. Soften this up. Just gonna start laying in values now. <clears throat> it's gonna take some time to build up values in the background. And I'm not worried about preserving that edge too much. It's just kind of a general guide for me because I can use my eraser to help, uh, help cut that shape back out. So I'm just building up charcoal, or not chalk, I mean, it's not charcoal. And one of the things that I really like about drawing this way is it really adjusts the kind of the key of, of the drawing. And I talked a bit about this in the last, uh, in the last drawing is really what a key is. Um, when in a printmaking process, um, with the, the first step in the process, if you have multiple layers is to establish a key. Um, and that's often kind of the outline um, and it's often kind of dark. And, and then everything else builds around that. And then in, uh, in drawing and painting, we can key the drawing or the painting to a specific value or a specific color. And then everything becomes relative to that. Um, and because we're often starting, you know, 99% of the time when we draw, we're working on a white piece of paper, everything is naturally keyed to that white and our eyes kind of adjust to that. Um, and by forcing us to work on black paper, it adjusts that sensibility of what that key is, and you'll, you'll perceive the values kind of in a new way. Um, so one of the things you know, that I, I do a lot, and you've seen in some of the previous videos, is kind of make a mess early on, blocking in some basic values, but I'm gonna wipe this down, I'm gonna build it up again, wipe it down, build it up again. I'm going to hit this, this background a lot uh, throughout this whole drawing process. So just thinking uh, kind of broadly about the, the negative shape 
the space around the hat. It's kind of filling up the, the, the page all right. It's not correct in terms of the, the lines and the proportions. And I can start to start to adjust that if I need to. And I'm, it's going to happen throughout the entire process. Let's see, I'm feeling like this could come down here a little bit more. Hello, Marie. So you just joined. Hello, from Canada, Italy, all right. From Algeria, hello, hello. hello from California, Montana. We'll skim up through some of the questions. All right, everything seems to be good, all right. I know it's another beautiful day here in Colorado. It's finally getting warm. I'm digging it. Although, of course, like everybody else, we're probably not getting out nearly as much as we used to, so. All right. Started to block in some of these areas. I'm gonna lay in a little bit more light down here. And then, you know, watch what I do here. And because I know this paper is gonna release the chalk more easily than some other other papers. You know, if this was, you know, this is gonna grab the charcoal differently. If I'm working on a charcoal paper, that might grab the charcoal or the chalk differently. But um, as you get familiar with the peculiarities of the surface you're working on, um, I'm gonna, I know that this is, I can erase back down. And I, what I really love to do is take something like this and then just, kind of wipe it all down. Smooth it out, and build up the layers again. Again, I'm just using the kind of the pad of my hand to do that. Changing up the direction of my marks. I want to be careful not to follow the contour of the hat too much. So if any of those marks comes across as too strong, I need to smooth it out. You can tell this is already kind of creating this ghostly quality. And I lost that, lost the form of the hat. If I've, if I've lost it too much. You see that angle here is not quite right. I can start to establish it again. But again, because I know the, the, the surface is going to release the chalk, I'm not too worried about this because I'm going to come back in in a little bit and uh, redefine the form using my eraser. And this is where, it, when, I, when I grab the eraser, this is where it starts to mess with my brain a little bit because I'm used to erasing down to white. Um, but in this process, when I erase, it's actually going to expose the black of the paper. And so it it... it it really plays with my understanding of the positive and negative um, and, and the mark making. And I start to think of the eraser in my mind, it starts to see it as a, as a tool that is making a mark rather than erasing it. So let me smooth this out here. I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I come back up in here, And I'm going to redefine the edge of that hat. As I'm erasing back, I'm, I almost perceive that as a black mark that's on that surface. And that is really kind of mind-blowing right now. Um, but it's, it's actually erasing back down to it. So if you've never drawn like this before, I think it's a really fun challenge. Uh, I'm actually going to... I have the photo printed up in front of me, but I like... I like what's being projected on the screen to my left. So when I'm looking off, that's what I'm looking at right now. All right. And then what happens is that, you know, because I'm building up the chalk on my hand, I'm also lightening the overall value a little bit. And that's gonna help me control the subtle variations of value in the dark parts of the drawing. So I'm gonna knock that down, do some negative drawing to pull out the, the form of the hat. 
And what's nice about this hat too is that it's got this kind of rounded quality to the edges. And so I can let those edges be kind of soft and subtle. Uh, and uh, it'll, it'll help to reinforce the form of the hat. Okay, this curve. How's that looking up there? You can see it's starting to kind of emerge out of this, this foggy atmosphere that's been created. This feels too big, so I'm gonna... Going to kind of cut this back down a little bit more. Build up some value. And there's a bit of a cast shadow over here that I can erase back out if I need to when I get to that point, um, let me see. So this is just a kneaded eraser that I'm kind of shaping into a tool and, oh, sorry for leaning into that shot there a bit too much. Um, so it's just a kneaded eraser and as I pick up chalk, it's kind of folding it in on itself to get back to some new, cleaner eraser. All right. Thinking through some of the shapes is all very subtle. Uh, right now, this line here feels like it could be adjusted a little bit. from New Jersey, Santa Fe, Virginia, Oklahoma. All right. Somewhat sunny in Tennessee. Sounds like a good day. So here's what I, what I did along here is I, I'm just kind of trying to define that form, but I know this is actually going to be light here. Um, so I'm using my eraser to kind of feel out the edge but I'm going to build that up. So a lot of building up, taking down, building up, taking down of those values. All right. Um, looking at them from the screen. I'm going to try to remember to keep my head out of that shot. Um, all right. I think what I want to do now is essentially start from the top down, just because I know how soft this is all going to be if I work my way from the bottom up. As I move up, I'm, I run the risk of just, just kind of destroying everything. Uh, so what I would, what I think I'm going to do is, is use my, my pencil to really kind of map out a more specific path. And what's going to happen is that I'm going to then lighten this space around it to consume that line, and that's going to make that line disappear. And when you get rid of the line to define an edge, that helps to add to the realism overall. Uh, I'm trying to use the pencil on its side uh, because that's going to actually help keep that point sharp for when I need it in the details. I'm just going to feather out some of the light areas for now. And again, as I've mentioned in some previous drawings, I want to be mindful of the direction of my marks uh, so that it doesn't flatten out the drawing. I want this light area to really read like it's behind the uh, behind the top of the hat here. So really what I'm doing is I'm just building up some of these lighter areas to consume that line that I've got. Um, and then this edge, I need to be conscious of how it's changing throughout the path along there. So it, it kind of rolls over here where we get light on the brim of the hat and that transition to the background becomes a bit more subtle. And then, and then as we move, as we move up the, this, this part of the here, the, the top of the hat, it becomes a little bit sharper and I need my drawing to reflect that. So I'm going to kind of bring my kneaded eraser to a point See how that feels. 
Looks all right. And then, so as I come down here, I can really focus on that, that shift along that edge where, it's, where the light starts to kind of roll onto the, the front of the hat. So I'm gonna soften that edge and then build up that background. So, so much of this drawing is happening and so much of the hat is being built by drawing the space around it at this point. So, Anybody else following along? All right, so how many people from so many places all over the world? Yes, I agree, Wilma. Well, I'm glad you're all enjoying this. I really appreciate the compliments. I've been hearing from some of you that this seems to be connecting and that's always good to hear that the instruction is landing. Um, it's hard, you know, I've got quite a bit of experience teaching on ground and, and you always have the feedback from the, the students there. You can say, all right, this, this concept made sense or it didn't. Um, and so having some of that feedback is helpful. All right, can I build this up? And then here we have this really nice overlap, this crossing over the, the top of the hat with the brim, and that helps to create the, the depth there. And so I wanna build that up in layers. So I really want this, um, this part here to be a sharp and clear, kind of distinct overlapping of form. Uh, so I'm gonna give this particular attention and then we get it gets sharp right in here along that edge. And so we, we have this really nice variation in the reference photo. Um, and I want, I want that edge to be nicely varied as well. That's a huge aspect of drawing is edge control. Really paying attention to what is happening on the, along, around the edges of an object. So lots of cross hatching, just changing my marks and moving them in a variety of directions. All right. And then you can see this is, this is just kind of getting all messed up. That's all right. I'm gonna clean this up later. I'm gonna continue my, my progress down, uh, down the hat. Uh, so one of the things you would have seen me do in previous drawings was saving the bright lights till last. And I'm gonna do that in reverse. I'm gonna save the darkest darks for last. So I'm trying to observe some of the sh subtle shifts in value um, in, in places like this, where it's all very, it's a very dark shape in here, but it's not pure black. There's a, there's a part here in the shadow core where it gets even darker. So I want my drawing to reflect that subtlety. And that's ultimately what helps to create that three-dimensional form is that transition from the light into the dark um, and allowing those dark areas to have a sense of transparency as well. So, all right. So I'm just using light circular marks. At this point is really just the weight of the pencil that's carrying the marks here, and it's all very subtle. And I'm thinking about the form, how we, we move from kind of a horizontal direction here. Um, it kind of comes up and around into the brim and then down into the front. So there's a lot of compound curves happening here. And I'm trying to pay attention to, um, one of the things I mentioned in the last drawing with the, the glass is this transition between Think, seeing the marks as abstract shapes, which can be helpful. Um, so, you know, in this case, I'd be just think, be thinking about this as a line, as a kind of a kidney shape, almost like in here, um, or, you know, kind of a rectangular form here on the front of the hat. I could be thinking about it in terms of just abstract geometric shapes, and that can be helpful. Uh, but sometimes if you feel like you're getting lost, then try switching over to really understanding what is happening in the form. What is the direction of the plane? In this case, 
There's a vertical um, component to it. There's a, a vertical quality to it. But there's also this, this kind of slight curve around the face. And so if I'm aware of what's happening there, I can let my marks kind of reflect that and, and, and allow it to you know, lead the, the direction of my marks there. And then it's just start, it's really about kind of slowly building up these layers. How's everybody doing? See lots of, lots of comments here. Sounds like there's some good discussion there. Losing some track of it, but let me know if you need me to provide any kind of thoughts. It looks like there's some good discussion happening. Yeah, share your, uh, share your own observations, your own experiences. You know, when you've, when you've tried work in this way, what have you learned from it? I think this is going to ultimately be about atmosphere. The last one was about kind of the clarity and really observing reflections and ref refraction of light. All right, so here what I'm doing is I'm, I'm overshooting this edge. And I'm going to then use my eraser to sharpen it back up. Sometimes I just have to switch. I'm right-handed, but sometimes I switch to left-handed just so I can get I can get in there and get the, the right cut on a line. So along this edge, it's a little bit sharper here, and it becomes a bit more diffused down here as the light kind of rolls over the brim of the hat. Going to build up some value here because I want there to be some contrast. Just using the white, uh, the, the the weight of the pencil here to build up value, and I know it's going to be it's going to lift off some when I do that. So we tend to key to the darks. You know, in our brain, we see the dark is dark in a in a in a drawing or a painting. And we, our brain says, oh, that, that's black, even though it may not be black. You know, if I look at this hat in the photo there, there's, there are some darker areas. But if I took just a pure um, charcoal pencil and held it up to the, the photo, I do that right here, I can still see that the, the charcoal, from my perspective, is still actually a little bit darker than the darkest part of the hat. Um, and so, like I said, what we do is, we tend to do is we, we tend to see the lightest light and the darkest darks, and we key to those elements. And, and our brain converts them into saying that's white and that's black, um, even though they may not be purely white. And if you were to uh, put that in the context of something lighter or something darker, we would see its true value. And it's one of the, the benefits to really considering that early on in the drawing. I know some painters will, right off the bat, they will indicate on their canvas where the lightest light is, where the darkest dark is, and then build everything in between that. Um, and that can be a helpful tool sometimes in drawing as well. Um, and if I don't necessarily do that all the time, um, but I've, what I've done is I've built in into my process a, a kind of a skepticism about the marks that I'm making. I know at some point I need to correct them. I just, I, none, none of these marks are, are correct in my mind. They're just suggestions and I'm gathering information as I go along and as I, um, as I gather more information, then, then they start to become more correct in my mind, more correct and more permanent in the drawing. All right, I wanna sharpen up this edge along here as well. I'll try to do this without cutting in, cutting my head into the camera there. I think that kind of works. I'll round this out, soften this a little bit. I don't know if we can kind of see on the camera, you can start to see that, you know, as I'm erasing down, it almost feels like I'm making a positive mark there. And I, I love that. Um, Love that appearance. All right. So now um, what I'm doing is I'm continuing to, to work in this area, looking for subtle variations in value. 
if I'm worried about the directionality of my marks, I can just work in these short kind of circular um, marks. Here I'm kind of faking the value relationship a little bit. So if I follow along the path along here, this is darker in value than this when I'm looking at the reference photo. And as I come down here, now this becomes lighter than the black hat next to it. But in reality, this is all one value. And in my drawing, what I can do is I can kind of force that a little bit. If I darken this here, if I lift off some of that charcoal or that chalk, and I add a little bit more down here, then I'm, I'm creating a kind of an artificial gradient and um, it kind of enhancing that relationship uh, so that this stays light against something that's slightly darker, this stays, this is light against something that's darker, and by pushing that a little bit more, it might add to the overall kind of drama of the scene. So as you can see, I'm, I'm, I've kind of overshot the band of the, the hat a bit. I want to see that as one shape of light, and I don't want to divide that into hat and band at this point. I want to make sure I understand the sh shadow shapes and the light shapes before I add those details. So I'm looking at this curve here. How's everybody doing? Yeah, so um, yeah, these are white chalk pencils. This is ha this happens to be a, a, a Krita color brand that I've got. Um, I've also used kind of a Generals brand as well. And I'm going to continue to focus my attention on this area here. Uh, let me see here. Kind of darkening. Kind of refining that edge. Let's see how that looks. Let's see. All right. And I'm going to race out to get some of that, that really kind of shadow core established there. And I want to bring kind of the brim of the hat out, really kind of establish a subtle highlight in this area. Right along the turn. We often, that's often where we'll see the a kind of a brighter light, where it's catching the light a little bit more is right around the, 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 at the, the turn, the kind of along the term, uh, the kind of the terminus of that. And as I follow along this, uh, this ridge along here, I want to look at the path, but I want to evaluate whether or not it's a consistent value. I don't think it is. It, because this is a thin line surrounded by dark areas, I know that it's, uh, in, there, I, I, cognitively, I've done enough drawing that I know that this is appearing brighter than it actually is. And so I'm forcing myself to not go too bright with it. Um, again, that, that gets back to the idea that all values are relative. Um, and what's happening is that because, again, there's so much kind of the dark area around it, it's influencing how I perceive this, this value here. It's in the context of these dark areas. And, um, and so it's in my mind, it, I feel like that's a really bright line but I have to force myself to not overdo it. Um, if I squint my eyes and, I, and I'm focusing on this area of the hat, I'm focusing on this part of the line, or I have my eyes looking at this part of the line, but I'm putting my attention over here, I feel like this is so much brighter. Uh, something that I've talked about in previous drawings as well is that you get used to setting your eyes in one location, but putting your awareness, your attention on something else. Um, and that can often be uh, highly illuminating. It'll, help, it'll show you something about the value, about the color, about the form, if you're putting your attention on something that's in your periphery. And so that's what I'm doing here. And I want my drawing, I think, to kind of reflect that quality of it being lighter on this side, a little bit darker. And I could even force that a little bit more. Uh, this is getting a little bit too hazy, so I'm going to sharpen that up a little bit. I'm not sure I like that line. See how that works.
And so then as I, as I go through the drawing, I also need to be thinking about um, the cross contour. Again, something I've talked about in previous drawings as well. The contour being the edge of the object, the cross contour being the form of the object within those edges. So I really want to understand this kind of this concave quality here in the top. It kind of high, it gets hidden behind this ridge, comes up and over and then back down. Uh, so as I start to lay my marks in, I, uh, I just want to be aware of that. So there's a little bit of light here, for example. It's all very subtle, but that kind of drops into the top of the hat up and over the edge. And then this ridge kind of comes in on top of it, hiding the, the inner part there. I'm gonna soften that, all right. Um, so I wanna be careful, what, you, you saw me make these kind of diagonal lines following that ridge, um, but I can, um, I'm losing some of that, that cross contour, that volume uh, awareness by having marks that only run in this direction. There's also a vertical quality to this edge of the hat, and I can have some cross hatching that references that as well. And that'll help to reinforce the volume of the hat. And so now I'm in this part here where we're in shadow. It's not as dark as this part up here, so I can build up some value. Again, I've got chalk on my hand. Let's see what I've got over here. Just kind of build up a haze. This would be a, a, a similar process to uh, when I was working with vine charcoal in previous drawings, just to knock down the white and, uh, and affect my understanding of the key of the drawing. I'm doing the, the same but in reverse using, using the chalk, kind of just knocking down some of the, the darkest darks so that I'm locking in the main value as this being a little bit lighter in value than this area, a little bit lighter here in value than the darkest part here in the rim. Uh, so, thinking about the cross hatching. How's everybody doing? Oh, you are welcome. Uh, well, almost talking about understanding value shifts. Yeah, it's it's really a tricky one. Understanding value is is a, a challenging one um, because again, our our brains are always calibrating um, because it, what, we're, what our brains do um, is they, they prioritize an awareness of the object, not the optical truth. You know, we're, our, our eyes, sure, you can kind of think of them as lenses, but our brain is not a camera. Our brain is interpreting what we're seeing in front of us um, and, and is trying to determine what is most valuable to it. And in a lot of ways, the optical truth of something is less value, valuable than the literal truth. Um, I, I teach a perspective course that I have on Artist Network, um, and it's all about developing an, kind of an internal understanding of perspective. Um, and one of the analogies that I use is that of a cup, which is, you know, when we're drawing a cup, um, one of the, the things that we will often see is, uh, you know, somebody drawing, a, a beginner drawing a cup like this, got a round top and a flat bottom, something like that, right? This, this rendering right here is built on the idea of the literal truth of the cup. You know, what's important to us when, we're, when we see a cup in front of us is to know that it is round at the top and it's flat at the bottom. So that's what we draw here. We don't draw a rounded bottom because the truth of the object is, of the, of the object is that if it was rounded at the bottom, we, it could kind of tip over, right? It's circular at the bottom, but it has a flat portion. So the flatness quality is more valuable than the roundness aspect to it. And so our, our brain is saying, uh, you know, if you, if you start by drawing a cup like that, your, your brain is just simply telling you that the, the fact that the cup has a flat bottom is more valuable than having the round quality to it. Um, and we do that all the time. We do that with values as well. Um, we, you know, I look at this black surface and it's more valuable for my brain to understand this as black, even though it's not really a, a true pure black. We could find other things that are darker than it in value. And so when you're trying to go for an optical truth, you want your drawing to look like what you're observing we often have to override that part of our brain 
that identifies what that object is, if that makes sense. Uh, we, that's, that's the benefit to thinking of it as an abstract shape, is, is that a brain then doesn't, it stops thinking about what's ultimately useful in a, in a physical way and more what's useful in the artistic way. So, um, so that's why we you know we'll, we'll key to a black is because it's, it's more important, it's more valuable to our brain to uh, be aware of this as a black paper, even though it's not pure black um, or white when it's not pure white. You see that all the time, especially like with interior decorating. If you're painting your room, you go to the store and you buy you buy a white paint and you're trying to match a white in your house and they don't even come close because what you, maybe what's in your house is actually not white at all. It's just it's like this light beige that we've just kind of keyed in our brains to perceiving it as white. So it's all about relationships, all about value relationships. All right, I'm, so I'm starting to build up some of the light. That's feeling pretty good there. I know I'm going to come back in later and refine out this form uh, as I work my way down. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of I build this kind of light around the, the brim here. Maybe lighten that up just a touch. I'm going to be thinking about the the shadow. All right. Let's see here. I'm going to do some negative drawing to establish that rim again. So drawing the, the white around it, not the hat itself. So pulling and lifting. Now I'm doing this pretty quickly. Um, I, you know, if you're, if you're kind of new to drawing, um, you may take your time to really place your pencil before you kind of flick it off in the direction you want. Um, I don't know if I've just been drawing enough, but I can just move more quickly. Your brain will get that. All right, let's see how that feels. I'm gonna race out this area here to see if I'm back at the black portion because I want this to be in shadow. Build up some light. This area is of the hats and light, so I can let that kind of get foggy. And I can start to erase out the shadow form here. And now build up, build up some of the light here. This is an interesting uh, transition along in here. It's a very subtle shift right in this area. So there's no hard line. As I come across here, it becomes a little bit easier to see. And over here, we can really see the, um, the line of the shadow being cast there. Yeah, so we're coming up on about 45 minutes, probably getting closer to, get closer to being done. It depends on how much detail I want to add to this. Uh, just kind of thinking my way through, make sure I've got the proportions working for me here. Some suggestions of that band. All right. So now I'm going to continue to build this. So now I want to be aware in my mind about the transition from this vertical portion of the hat to something that's horizontal. And I can let my marks kind of reflect that change in direction as well. So I'm going to come back in here and sharpen this up a little bit later. And I can use my uh, compressed charcoal pencil to establish that a little bit. Uh, and here we see a nice kind of rim of light kind of catching along in here. So I want to be careful with the, the direction of my marks. I want to, I don't want this to read as a line. I want it to read like a thin sliver of light. So I'm going to let these kind of smooth out. feather this out as much as I can. I'm gonna squint, keep squinting. Squinting helps to prioritize values, value relationships. If you're a painter and you're trying to determine values, squinting is a, is a helpful tool. 
and then you bring your focus in to really help to see the color. I do a lot of my, most of my drawing is done with my eyes out of focus. Maybe what I'll do, I'm gonna save this, the sharpness of the rim of that, of the hat for a little bit later. Right now it's too big, I'm gonna keep kind of cutting this form out. So those marks are a little harsh ran them vertically and they really stood out and like that. I try to get rid of those marks. I'm just kind of trying to make sure I understand the path of light as it comes across the front of the hat here and down across the brim. It's a little bit darker. It's very subtle in here. So I'm gonna let my drawing kind of try to be as subtle as, as what the reference photo is doing. So now, uh, now I wanna sharpen up kind of, and define the edge of the, the hat the brim a bit more. I wanna correct it. That's feeling a little bit better. And then there's a shift where we go from it kind of being light along the edge to, um, to being dark along in here. So what I wanna actually do is come back in under here. One of the things, one of the, the kind of principles of drawing too is that areas of high contrast tend to draw attention and tend to advance. Um, so if you, have, if you have an area of high contrast, an area of low contrast in a drawing, the area of high contrast is gonna to tend to come forward and you can start to use that to your advantage. And so I can reinforce the, the perspective of the hat by bringing this part forward, by increasing the contrast here and maybe artificially letting the contrast back in this section um, lessen from what I'm seeing in the reference photo. The reference photo is, is because there's so much white around it, it largely, largely feels like the hat is a silhouette there and that's not really helpful for creating depth. So I'm gonna do some fudging in this drawing and increase the, the contrast in this area, lower the contrast here, and use that to help guide my eye through and across the page. So we, it's a great way to, to control the viewer's path is to really think about contrast. Um, so when they look at the drawing, we know that they're gonna be they're going to spend more time and pay, pay, pay more attention at first to the areas of high contrast, like maybe here, here there's a high contrast, there's some high contrast up in here and here, and so that's, so that's how you move around the drawing. If you find that um, all your contrast is in one portion of the drawing, that may be throwing off the balance in your work. So I just want to kind of look at that. And that contrast comes in uh, not, in only, not in only value, but also um, in terms of shape, edges, so a soft edge versus a sharp edge, a big shape versus a small shape. You know, the contrast is just the difference between things in your drawing. So if there's a greater difference, our eye is more likely to go to it. All right, how are we, how are we doing here? Any questions? Welcome, welcome. People seem like they're having a good day today. All right, let me see here. All right, I'm gonna soften this edge. And maybe what I'll do is, uh, I'm gonna imagine that the light is a little bit stronger, kind of catching on this brim. It's a, it's a very soft, edge along in here. And so I can let my drawing kind of reflect that and try to see where where the light might be catching it a little bit more, uh, maybe right in along here. So I kind of have a, a lightly drawn edge. 
and then I can bring that uh, that highlight in just set inside of there. And then transition, let that fade out as we transition to that that portion of the of the edge of the hat being dark against the light that's catching it on the inside now. All right, and then focus on edge control there. Gonna sharpen up those areas. I feel like that's working out okay. okay. Part of me is really kind of getting bugged by how light this, how kind of soft this area is, but I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe it's actually working. I know what I'll do actually. I'm gonna come back in with a charcoal pencil to sharpen that up rather than, um, can I continue the same process I've been on? Using my eraser to refine that edge. There we go. All right. Build up some of that, It'll soften that out a little bit. Now, now what I'm gonna do is actually gonna get closer to the end. And now I'm gonna come back in with my uh, compressed charcoal pencil that I've sharpened out uh, pretty well. Um, and I'm gonna bring out some of the darker darks. Uh, I, there's a lot of fine detail work in the band and that's where that's, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna need that sharp point. So I'm gonna wait till the end and I'm gonna use my pencil on its side to, uh, to, so that I maintain that sharpness. I wonder if this is actually showing up. I think it's showing up in the video. that this is, uh, this is a bit darker than the paper. And so I wanna think about the edge along in here, and maybe bring that the darkest dark right up to the edge in one portion of it, but not the whole thing. So just gonna add some subtle richness to the, the drawing in certain areas. Keeping the marks light and loose, and I can see it. I have to actually use kind of the reflection of the, the light source in front of me and to help see that a little bit more. Um, it's all fairly subtle, but I can see that subtle shift between the charcoal that's on top and then the natural dark value of the paper. I'm gonna sharpen up the area, the edge of the hat and a little bit over here. Use light circular marks so that I can, I'm not having hatch marks that run contrary to the form of the hat. Looking for where it's darkest, and I feel like it's kind of darkest along this section here. And not right up against that edge, I see a little bit of reflected light coming in along the edge. But what I wanna do is kind of sharpen that just a touch, but keep that mark really thin. So at a distance it disappears, um, but I wanna bring the darkest part of the shadow, the shadow core, I'm gonna bring in right in here. And there's some nice texture to the paper that helps to um, stimulate the, uh, the wool hat here, the wool of the hat. All right. All very subtle in here, so I wanna see what's going on. Where is it darker, where is it a little bit lighter? Is any of that showing up? Let me see how that's showing up on the paper. Yeah, I think so. I think you can start to see some of that, that bounce light right in here. It's a little bit lighter in value than in here. Um, before I get down any farther, I wanna kinda of soften this transition. Come across. Here we get a bit of a shadow core. So I can use my charcoal to draw that. Just using the weight of the charcoal. Don't have to push down too hard on this. And then try to see, try to see what that shape looks like. It's kind of a hard shape to identify. But 
I can squint and that'll help to see it. All right, I'm gonna move across here. I'm gonna sharpen up this edge. That's something that I kind of called out earlier and I lost that edge. So I can use the charcoal to sharpen that back up, especially right in this area. And it's darkest right in along this portion of the, of the, the brim of the hat. So. And that'll add some depth. Transparency in your shadows is really helpful. Even if it's very subtle, we perceive subtle shifts in value very easily. Um, and we, we tend to either overstate it or understate it. Um, but I think it adds a lot of depth if you can have some, have, have some subtle shifts in value um, in the, the still shadow area, so they're not, the, not just a one flat shape. Now I'm gonna use the charcoal to, I need to refine this edge a bit more. So what I'm gonna do is bring up this light again. I lost too much of that. I'm gonna use my pencil here to, to kind of sharpen this along in here. But hopefully it's enough to, to continue the, um, our understanding of the, the volume of the hat that it, I want it to feel like it's really wrapping around there. I want it to sharpen up a little bit, but don't want it to flatten out. Let's see, how does that feel? So. Oh, Wilma is an art therapist, that's fantastic. Yeah, I totally get art as a therapy tool, though I know very little about it, the, about the particularities of it. All right, let me see if I can I create the brim of the hat here just by bringing in some of that light right along in there. That feels all right. I may have to bring the light back in here a little bit more, but all right. Now, let's get to that band. It's a little bit sharper here. I really want to observe how the band wraps around. So I'm gonna take a lot of time to really study this. Um, and as it comes around, if I, if I make this mark um, so that it ends up being too perpendicular to this vertical edge, it'll flatten out. But I also don't wanna over kind of exaggerate that. Um, but it's, it's quite a noticeable curve and I really wanna think about how it wraps around. Um, and I want to be careful not to make it too solid or it'll feel artificial. So just something like that might be enough to establish that part of the band. And as I come down in here, what actually what defines the bottom edge of that band is that there's a little white highlight. So I'm going to let that go as it is right now. And as I come along under here, I could see that shadow forming as a line underneath the band. So I can bring that here. And then the, the band is, and it has all these fine ridges. So as I establish this shadow in here, I'm gonna run these marks vertically to help reinforce those, those ridges there. And then what I can do is come back under here and, and I can just kind of tap along this path to establish that bottom ridge of the band. I don't want that to be too hard and consistent. It'll feel unnatural. Just gonna have these dashes along there. Um, and, now, and then there's a little bit of a band right underneath this shadow. There's a bit of a line of light that's catching that. Short vertical marks that I'm doing here because it's the this band is formed out of these vertical edges. So I'm thinking about the curve of this, this path where this light is catching, but I'm trying to make it as an accumulation of these 
short vertical marks. Uh, I can't really rest my hand on, I guess this part right here I can rest my hand on, so that's what I'm going to do. Kind of hatching now to help establish some of those highlights. I try to observe where it might be lighter. I think it's a little bit, still a little bit lighter in along in here. That's feeling all right. I can come back in here and add that little bit of light along that band. And now, similar to what I mentioned when I was up in this area. There's a lot of dark values here. Um, and so any mark that I make, it's gonna stand out. It's gonna feel um, lighter than it actually is. And I wanna make sure that it doesn't compete with the highlights over here. I don't want this to jump out too much. I want it to be noticeable, but that's all in shadow. It's a very kind of subtle light that's catching there. So then what I'll do is I will start to Draw in some of the darker values in that shadow area. So now if the values that I'm laying in are a 10, if this is the darkest dark, then the paper becomes a nine in value. Use this to help create some texture there with these vertical marks. And then there's a, I'm going to continue the band through here, looking for the shapes of the dark. I don't really know what's happening in here um, with that bow and the, the brim, but I'm going to look for those shapes and just try to suggest them as much as possible rather than overstate them. So I'm going to look for these dark areas. Under here, I'm going to create, do some kind of negative drawing, then make that shadow a little bit darker than the, the top portion of the hat. And since I can't really tell what's going on in this area, I'm just going to let it go. I uh, just noticed the fun little detail, the stitching right in along here. It's catching the light in an interesting way. Something like that can be enough to um, draw some attention over there. So I hope you're all enjoying your day. I think we're getting pretty close to the end here, so stick around to the end. Um, check out the description notes there. There's more resources that I've got on artistnetwork.com. There's a, there's a menu item at the top of the page there for drawing together, where there's some additional resources for drawing if you're looking for them. Artist Network TV, go spend the afternoon, watch a video there. Some of your favorite artists, if you're a, if you're a painter, you know, maybe watch a painting video and see how some of these concepts are applied to, let's say, oil painting or watercolor, pastel. Give this a shot, do your own drawing. Um, uh, right in here, I feel, like there's, I feel like I need a little bit more detail Sharpen up that edge. And I'm going to come back in and darken this portion of the, the brim, bring that forward. I don't know, any questions or anything about? Uh, Wilma has a question about cross contour drawing. Oh, I'm glad you understand that. It's, you know, it's something that I. It's really important to me is understanding the cross contour. You know, some artists, you know, and this actually, this drawing here um, kind of reflects that. Some artists, you know, they, they really kind of smooth out their marks to the degree, to a degree where they, it's hard to really see them anymore. And it's all about the, the resulting shape and value. And I think that's a, a very, it's a fine uh, way to approach drawing. Um, I, I get a little, kind of antsy when I fuss too much. And so I like to, um, I, I like to rely on other tools. Cross contour is a way to help me to 
to keep me from getting bog, being bogged down in the weeds of adding, you know, creating these smooth transitions in value um, while still making the form understandable. I'm just kind of doing some negative drawing to suggest that shadow along in here. I can do some negative drawing in here. to suggest this uh, this shadow along in here. I don't know, but I feel I'm feeling pretty good about this. It's fun. Now, uh, you know, I can, I, I see what's happening now. I could feel my, my brain kind of calibrating to this and reading that as white when it's actually probably really dark in value. If I flip this over, if I look at this edge here, I can see how dark that still is. But again, my, my, my brain is being keyed to the values here. Um, some of these marks are a bit too strong. I'm gonna smooth that out a little bit. But I'll keep drawing. Where are we at? We're yeah, just over an hour, not too bad. Some of these other ones have been running a little bit long. Shout out if you have any questions, thoughts, concerns. I'm just gonna keep drawing for a little while. But I, mean, I think I'm pretty much near the end of it. Now I'm just nitpicking. Let's see, I think I may have to, it feels, this is, this is reading like a shadow, so I need to not have that happen. So I need to, I need to lighten this up. I was kind of thinking in my brain that I could add kind of the drama of the scene, but um, by having it shift from light to dark to light, but I think it's just too much. And it's again, there are, I think I feel like I'm interpreting it as a as a shadow. How do you protect a charcoal drawing after it's done? Um, it's a good question. Um, uh, you know, a spray fixative will work. Um, there are different kinds, and I wish I had some better kind of understanding of the brands uh, to be able to kind of intelligently tell you which ones are going to be most effective. But, you know, find a, you know, one from a trusted brand in, uh, you know, making drawing tools um, and try some spray fixative. And essentially it's, it's just this adhesive spray that sits on top of the drawing um, and locks all the dust particles into place. Uh, and some of them will alter the contrast a bit. Sometimes it's in, in a really effective way. It'll pull out the contrast in the drawing. Um, so you want to you want to test it out a little bit. If you're you've got a really favorite drawing and you've never used a spray adhesive a spray fixative, then I wouldn't use it until you've tested it on other scraps. Um, and then uh, you can you can find kind of um, uh, like these plastic sheets like a mylar. Um, sheets that you could put down on top and then stack your drawings and that helps to keep it from uh, kind of smudging all over the place. That's what I use for pastel quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Calling it done. Uh, Montana Gray called it out. Yeah, knowing when to stop is is the challenge. But, you know, it, when I'm painting, often I'm outdoors and it the landscape tells me when I'm done because the lights change too much or clouds will come in or something. And so you just have to, you're just done when, when it's done. Um, and, but in general, uh, one of the things I've mentioned before is that you want your marks to always be representing something um, as much as possible. And I've done a lot in this that I would argue wasn't really, I'm just kind of building up value like in here, I'm not really representing anything. I don't have anything in my mind when I'm doing this other than just building up light value. And I'm, it's perhaps a wasted opportunity for me there. But one of the reasons, one of the ways I like to evaluate whether or not I'm done is if I'm, if I'm making marks that aren't, are, that are no longer really representing anything. Um, but sometimes it's just fun to make marks. I want to keep going. But you see some of the really the great artists and they, they become so efficient because every mark means something. 
And it doesn't mean every mark is the most important mark on the page, but it has some sort of meaning. And, uh, and I think that's something to aspire to. Not something that I necessarily have achieved 100% of the time. All right, glad to see you all again. Um, thanks for the positive feedback. Um, we're going to be back again on Friday. Um, what am I? Oh, yeah, keep your pants on. <laughs> That's a fun one. Um, it's coming up. So I have a link to that reference photo in the description. You'll see what we're working on. Um, I haven't decided how I'm going to draw that yet. Um, I'm going to, but I'm going to give it a shot. Thank you all for joining me. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I may, uh, I may continue to, to work on it a little bit, but I'd say I'm done. I'm, at this point, I'm just messing around. So I really appreciate it. Thanks for the positive feedback. Thanks for joining me here. I will see you all again on Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Tell all your friends. Have them join in the, the fun. So it's great seeing you all, and I will see you later.